Okay, my friends, I've got to tell you, I, I was blown away. I watch Mr. MBB333 very good. He's always, he's the earth watch man. Now watch this here. He's, he's looking into these concretions, they call them. And um, he's asking where they came from. Doing well and having a great day. Now I'm just going to, you should come up and look at it. But here's what he's looking at. These, these big balls that are all over the earth. And they're literally everywhere on earth. They call them concretions. And he goes through, he tries to explain. He's very good about going into, you know, some pretty good detail. And I know exactly what they are, and they are biological. And I've shown this a million times. So I'm thinking, well, I'll just comment. So I do comment. And I say, well, come to my channel, check this out. So I'm reading some of these things, and I post another one, come to my channel, look at this stuff. And I go down here, and all of a sudden I see this one. Look at this mother dragon. They got 280 ups. And they're talking about me, Roger at Mudfalls University explains exactly what these things are, da 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 And all the way down the whole thing, they're all 280 clicks up, 72 comments, and they're all positive about how I am showing what these things really are. And I can show you exactly what they are, which I will right now. Now, everybody knows that knows me it understands I discovered mud fossils at least 10 years ago. I had them DNA tested and everything, and they are literally body parts of creatures. And I have giant human beings, and they were giganticer than you could ever possibly imagine. This is a goosehead. He's my good friend, a Caesar. And um, he um, petrified in the same manner they all did. And there appeared to be some catastrophic huge flood, which is talked about in history, and it literally parboiled these creatures as Venus approached Earth. And it was a glowing comet at that particular time. Velikovsky recorded it in, it was recorded everywhere in history, but they destroyed him. So, you got to look into Velikovsky. He recorded how this event happened and how all these things petrified. This is literally human or some kind of creature's body tissue and these are the balls that they find everywhere where are they coming from they're eroding right out of this wall and what is this wall made out of you see this red stuff that turns into mud and red clays because it is flesh these balls that are in these walls the balls in the walls are the anchors for what's called interstitium. And above the interstitium is a layer called mucosa, or in some cases, skin. Can we prove this? Well, I think I might be able to. Look at that. Identical. These are the hard balls. These are what they call the concretions. All the rest is floppy, wet, red, gooey clay, and so forth. And there's a mucosa on the top. Now, I have had my specimens DNA tested, and they're gigantic. And right there, you can see, there's a, there's a foot from some new species that we don't know about yet, which is called no-toes. We've got a ton of these. Let me just show you what my DNA tested stuff, and I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, I sent three samples off, which I extracted from mud fossils I have here. I sent them the extractions. They did all of this stuff. If you want to read down this, this is fine. I've got this online, too. But this was a very, it was a complicated procedure. And it was the first one ever done on ancient DNA extracted from mud fossils. And it came down that they, I, I took it right out of the blood. I know where the blood is. I'll show you where I took it from, and you'll see where it, that it was blood. And all the results were positive. The negative controls were negative. Everything was fine. And the blood was dense and um, um, excellent quality. Here it is right here. Excellent quality DNA sequence was obtained from the 36-inch tip and the lung sample using these, da 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 And here they are, with the, this is what they were, homo sapien, mitochondrial, B, and D loop. And um, again, this was a certified test, certified lab, and they stand behind their results. You just have to understand, I was the one that sent them the extractions. If I sent them lies and fraud, well, then I'm a liar and a fraud. That's not the case. Here's what I did send them. 
I did go extremely deep into this, and this is one of the lungs that I had DNA tested. It still has the pleura on it, but the blood was literally leaking out of here. I drilled a little hole in here, deep inside, to get the blood. I didn't take it, scrub it off the edge, but I could take it off of the edge of this one. I could take blood right off of here, because these are the alveoli. I see these little pocket-looking holes. They fill up with silicates in the condition that, that normally these would be holes. And I do have some lungs here that have still have the holes. That's a mud fossil lung right there. This one petrified in a different manner where it left the holes. But see, there's still a lot of red blood in there. And that's, that's another lung. Any, any anatomist would look at it. They understand what it is. And they understand why all those holes are there. Because they're alveoli. Now, this had, literally, the blood was leaking out of it. You see, these blobs of blood were coming out. Now, this one, I, again, took a sample out of this one. Now, I also took from two giant human beings, because they came back as DNA human. I showed you on that lung, it has the same exact same fabric, because this was a lung with an attachment that's called, I call it anyway, an interstitial flap, which attaches it and holds it in, in the body. And here's what it looks like in a mud fossil. Here's the same latch. You see it? Right there. There's that same latch. This one got ripped out somehow and then petrified in a manner where you can see all the little connective tissue bits and so forth. And this right here is how tendon connective tissue attaches. And that's the little latch I just showed you. Now, I didn't have this one tested, DNA, but I did have this one here tested. That's a hand from a left hand. I stick yours out like this. I can't do much. Mine's in trouble a little bit. I hurt my shoulder. Now, flap yours back like that. That's where the thumb goes. There's a little tendon that goes down there. Of course, your pad, your bumper pad is here. Your other one is there. This is broken off right about up here just before the knuckles start to go out with the fingers. And I have the fingers, I have fingertips and knuckles, and I, I, I have a lot of stuff from this particular one. Now, what I want you to look at, because I'm going to show you another one in a second, is this. We see the architecture of the hand. That's the little cleave that's right in between the big pad and the little pad on your hand. You see this silver stuff? It looks like somebody painted it on there, and it's peeling off. You see it? It's all across here. It's all across this pad of the guy's hand. And now it's peeling off. The reason is, that's what's called friction skin, grip skin. I call it grip skin. I don't know, call it whatever you want. But it's a different type of skin. It's extremely cornified, tough, very little blood. So I had to go into the muddy depths of this. This did not preserve quite as well as the other ones. The other ones were really, like, absolutely flawless. You saw the lung. I'm going to show you the fingertip, which was 36 inches long, just the tip of the finger. Now, I am extremely into anatomy. I work with anatomists. I have one of the best anatomy books in the world. And it shows exactly what this is, which is a fingertip. And there's a little pad that goes between each bone on your fingers so that they can rock against each other. These are the blood supplies. This is a fingernail. That's literally the fingernail. Now, it's a little bit eroded, but not much at all. And it was perfect. This was attached. And I could see that I couldn't get any blood off. There was no real blood showing on the edges, because obviously they get eroded. They're out in the weather. But you get inside. A whole different issue. A way different issue. So, I could see what I see, and then I look on the other side, and it's still got the fingerprints on it. Let me show you that. And again, th this is grip skin on the other side. Before we go there, remember this. this That's where I smacked it with a hammer. It just peeled right off like it was stuck with Velcro. All right, you remember I showed you that big hand, and all the stuff was peeling off, the silver look and stuff? That's this right here. This is highly keratinized basically dead skin that's really like leather and it's literally glued on here with these little bumps and when I smacked it with the hammer it just peeled right off 
It doesn't have any hard attachment. That's why the other ones are peeling off that hand. You see this? These are the sweat pores. These are the fingerprint ridges. And here they are right here. Exact same thing. Now, I went down inside here, a ton of blood in fingers, a tons of blood in fingers, and I took absolutely flawless, clean blood, and that's why I said excellent quality. Okay, I'm hoping Mr. MBB333 will contact me back. I love it. Concretions. They're not concretions, they're tendon balls. I think I've shown this pretty well, and I can explain all of the what they call basalt columns. They're not basalt columns. Let me just show you that real quick. Mr. MBB, call me, buddy. Call me. Okay, this should be a mind blower. Every tendon ball, which I, we were just looking at, these tendon balls that are all over the earth, was attached at one point by a fiber. Let me show you how many fibers are included in a tendon. You see this? Every one of these had a ball on the end of it, because <laughs> every one of these fibers had to be secured. There's where we are now, right here. They just kept getting, until you get bundles of them back here. We see bundles of them as Devil's Tower, Giant's Causeway, all over Iceland. These were creatures. The whole earth was made of creatures. It just needs to be explored now. And that's what I'm coming up with for facts in my world. Now, if Mr. MBB will talk to me, we'll go open this up and see what people can, can respond. It's time we get it open. I haven't been shut down in every... Well, hold on a second. Wait till I show you this. You know, I'm always complaining. I'm shut down everywhere. Nobody listened to me. Well, I was going to put this up just to rant a little bit, so I'll do it now. Listen. See what happens when I try to post. <laughs> Because the geologists, well, they ate me in every one of them. Look here, your comment was removed from archaeology and civilization. Just a comment. Your comment was removed from geology world. Another, just a simple comment. You temporarily can't post in the secrets of vibration. Just another comment. They won't let me talk anywhere. This is what I run into every single day. And I've almost never had any response from anyone. Although I did just get one today from New York University, and I'm hoping that they will continue to respond. I'd be very, very happy if that happens. All right, anyway, um, Mr. MBB, buddy, get it back to me, my friend. All right, I'll, I'll, um, I'll hope to hear from you.